Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to our channel. It's Yuli and Mike. And in this video, we're going to be sharing with you how we're going to make $1 million this year from dropshipping. That's right. So if you like this video and content like this, then feel free to like this video and subscribe to our channel. So we keep making more of this so we can help you make more money. But that being said, Let's go. Into it. So the reason why we're saying that we want to make one million dollars. That we will make one million dollars. Like, thank you, Adam. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> Even better. The reason that we're saying that we will make one million dollars this year is because when you set a goal, it needs to be really specific, super tangible. You want to have it down to the detail. You don't want to just say, "I want to be successful. I want to like make a lot of money. I want to have a great relationship." You need to come up with very specific things. And that's something mm -hmm. we've really learned. So basically we're sharing this with you guys because we want to take you along on the journey with us and also, you know, help us be accountable. And that's why this video is really freaking scary. So like Mike said, you can't get to your destination if you don't have one. And so this year we decided to really explode our income and make a million in profit. And with that being said, we were able to make a plan of specifically how to get there. And it's so easy once, like the hard part is setting the goal and making the plan. Once you have the plan, all you need to do is actually work the plan. But you need to be very flexible with your plan because life's going to throw a lot of curveballs and roadblocks at you. And you can't be focused. You can't be loyal to the plan. You need to be loyal to the destination. It's like if you were going to the grocery store and there was a detour along the way, the road was closed. Would you just stay waiting for them to finish the construction or would you take an alternate route? That's exactly what you need to do here. One problems arise. A lot of people don't have that destination. So when that detour does arrive, that's kind of the end of their journey. And so that's why it's so important to know where you going to want to go because nothing is going to stop you. And that's another thing that's really important when you're going after your goals is to remember that you need to completely control as much as you possibly can. You can control everything, but the input that you put into your mind. So, you know, taking away distractions, taking away, you know, people or things in your environment that are going to bring you down and not help you achieve your goals. You really need to completely control what you're focusing on because in this world, especially now, it's so easy to get distracted yeah. and so that's why we have our goals written in front of us so we can see them all the time you can put that as the wallpaper on your phone you can make a vision board you can put it Super as a powerful. poster near your bedside but it always needs to be top of mind because if you say it once and forget about it it's not going to happen and then you constantly need to be asking yourself is what i'm doing right now helping me achieve my goal that's so big it's huge and i catch myself sometimes like if i'm scrolling mindlessly on social media i ask myself is this helping me reach my goal and literally 10 out of 10 times well 9 out of 10 times <laughs> sometimes i research that um it's not helping me so i stop that and immediately and do something more productive. So I think that is actually a really good question to ask yourself constantly. And that's something we're bringing into this new year for sure. Definitely. And also something I think that's really big with goal setting is even if you have it written down and you see it every morning, you see it on your phone, you can become a little desensitized to it. You need to keep in mind why you set this goal. That's a big thing for me. So for us, we want to make a million dollars in profit. So much of that has, to, there's a million reasons why we want a million dollars in profit. Um, better quality of life uh, and all the good we can do with that money too. We both really want to get more involved with animal sanctuaries. So we can definitely help that along with if we had a million dollars. Um, yeah, just connect with the reasons why you want it. Like, what can you do for your family? How can you improve a G wagon? And it's okay to want to have nice things, but it's also, it's, it's twofold. There's nice things that you can have to make your life better and also to make life better for the people around you or for other people or for animals, strangers, whatever it is that you really connect with. You can help on such a greater scale if you have the money to do this. Absolutely. And I know like for me, sometimes um, I will feel guilty for wanting to make more money and I'll feel like it's really selfish and vain. And what do I need that money for? But like Mike said, when I connect to how much more I can give back with that money, 
um, it makes me motivated again mm-hmm. because I know that I'm not just trying to make this money so I can have nice things, but I'm also trying to make this money so I can help the world and like literally make an impact. So absolutely, super important to keep in mind and we'll get you that much farther, which brings us to things we're going to focus on specifically in our business that are going to make us go farther. The first thing being customer service, actually, like mm-hmm. we've always said to do customer service with heart. Um, and we kind of got a little bit away from that. We kind of started focusing on how can we decrease our refunds and increase profit. And it kind of took away, you know, the heart centeredness that we like to put into customer service. And what we've seen once we started focusing on that is when we focus with the customer's best interest in mind and like really think about how we can give value and how we can serve them, refunds have gone down as a side effect of that. And also customer satisfaction has gone up, which is also helping our Facebook page scores and, as well. Yeah, and it's not really that we got away so much from serving the customer. It's just that we got really focused as we scale on automating things and mm-hmm. having template responses for certain questions. And I think that's important too, but reducing the amount of time a customer service agent spends on answering tickets is not always best. There should be a little more of a human element in there, we realize. We need to make sure that every ticket is read as its own unique case. And there's a framework you can work around, but really deliver personalized customer service experiences. Yeah, like for example, a couple weeks ago, I ordered a piece of jewelry online and I wanted to return it. And the customer service agent kept calling me David and (laughs) kept telling me where to return my shoes to. So it was like literally just a copy and paste job, but that just made me never want to shop with that company again. Um, Whereas other companies where I've had like super awesome customer service with, like I buy from them literally just for the experience. The other thing that we're planning on doing is diversifying how we get customers. Now you might've seen a little bit of that in our last video where we talked about what happened when our Facebook ad accounts got banned. Um, But this year, even more so, we're going to focus on getting customers in cool new ways. For example, doing more PR. I don't know if you guys have ever heard of Harrow, which is help a reporter out, but it's like a completely free service. And every day you get inquiries from journalists and sometimes you get really awesome inquiries. Like we've had a past business featured in Reader's Digest. In Style Magazine, Mm -hmm. different blogs, um, daytime talk shows. I mean, we weren't featured in daytime talk shows, but you can when you do PR. So we're also going to explore other social media platforms. TikTok's really popular right now. Uh, I don't know anyone who's really monetized it super well yet, but there's an audience there and it will be monetized. Um, So why not us? Why not uh, be early on that? There's so many other things to... um, really trying to explore Pinterest again. We've run Pinterest ads for a while. We do well with organic Pinterest, but we struggled with Pinterest ads in the past, but we could definitely uh, try that again. You know, there's so many more things to try. There's so many avenues. We don't wanna just be so dependent on there's only one way to get there. So another important thing that we're gonna really focus on in our dropshipping business to make a million in profit is copywriting. Oh, sounds like you had something to say there. Well, what I was going to say is a lot of times when we see products fizzle out, what we found is it's possible to resurrect winners just by changing up the copy or the creative because the truth is, especially a lot of the products we sell are more timeless products versus um viral pump and dump product. And so Mm -hmm. really focusing on having amazing copy um, is something that we're definitely going to be focusing on to make more money. Yes. And also never settling too. If you have something that's working with copy, we're still going to spend money on new ads, trying new angles and different copy. Because that's something that we've in the past, we've been like, oh, we have a winning ad here and we have a winning product and offer. So let's just let this ride. But you know, if you're going to scale to a million in profit, you're going to have to do better than you've ever done before. And good enough is not good enough. It could, there's always a better level and there's oh, it's always worth trying new things. Yeah, like to be honest, and I think we've fallen victim to this, is like good is truly the enemy of great. It's true because like things have been pretty good for us, like knock on wood, the last like 
two years we've been drop shipping. And I think that's made it easy for us to get comfortable and not necessarily like put ourselves out there, take more risks, mm -hmm. um, you know, and really focus on refining things as much as we could. Yeah, no matter what stage of the, of the game you're in, you can always do better. There's always a next level. So whether you're really successful in this, you can always be more successful. There's always things that we're constantly learning to, ways to improve our business. Uh, and we can learn from anyone. So we are always active in groups, uh, watching YouTube channels too. We're always just trying to find more nuggets of information that we can apply. Reading books, um, things not just related to drop shipping, but just marketing as a whole, psychology, because a lot of marketing is buyer psychology. So just general psychology knowledge really helps with your copywriting and your product pages and your emails and all of this. Yeah, and of course, none of this would be possible if we didn't know our numbers. Like, because mm -hmm. we know our numbers and our profit margins and what we need, like what ROAS we need with Facebook ads to make the profit that we want to make, we know the target where we're going. So I can't say this enough because I used to be guilty of being a business owner who would ignore numbers because I just didn't want to deal with it in case things weren't, you know, going as well as I wanted them to. And at the end of the day, if you don't know your numbers, you really can't scale, um, especially scale big. So definitely, you know, mm -hmm. No. Yeah. Your numbers. You don't want to fall into that trap where it's like, I'll just do so well that the bills will work themselves out and the profit will roll in. But also, there's a leap year this year. So we have 366 days instead of 365. So this is the easiest year to make a million dollars. You have one extra day. Hey, Hello. she can knock it all she wants, but it's about $8 less a day you have to make to make a million dollars this year versus last year. Yeah. So what is it? What is like, how much money do you need to make per day to make a million dollars? Uh, what is it? It's, it's between 27 and 2,800 this year, since it is a leap year, it would divide a million by 366 and you need $2,732 and 24 cents per day. That's now, not so bad. Now, Focusing on how much money we make per day, having to make $2,700 per day is not a realistic strategy for me because I know that we will always do a little bit better in Q4 around the holidays. Um, I know that on Christmas, we're not going to be running Facebook ads to nearly the same scale. So it's not like you have to make the same amount every day. There's going to be points where you're spending money testing, finding mm -hmm. new things. And then when you really have something, you put the pedal to the metal and you really just uh, will do over that on those days. And also, I would like to say that something that really has slowed us down is focusing on what other people are doing. Like, oh, everybody's doing the general store. We need to do general store and do pump and dump products or everyone's doing CBOs, blah, blah, blah. And what we have found is when we do what works for us, it freaking works. Like, even if it's not working for anybody else, it works for us. So like, you know your business. Obviously, it's good to listen to people who have done what you want to do, but your job is to take that information, make it even better, and you know, make it even better and work for you. So mm -hmm. um, don't fall into the trap of, I can't succeed unless I'm doing X, Y, and Z, because you know, do even better than X, Y, and Z is what I'm trying There's to say. a million paths to get there, and there's so many paths to get there that have not been explored by anyone yet. So you can be the pioneer in that. That's what my chiropractor said <laughs> last week. There are many ways up the mountain. Also, work hard, play hard. <laughs> <laughs> So we're trying to focus on both of those things. And also, I think um, other ways that we're going to be able to make a million dollars this year is not burning ourselves out and being work, 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 work all the time. We need to take care of our health. Super important to take care of your health. Sleep enough, get your exercise, eat right, give your body the fuel it needs. Because when you're feeling your best, then you can deliver your best for your business. Um, if you're just ignoring like these signals and you're not sleeping enough and then you're just grabbing takeout all the time, you're going to get sluggish and you may spend more time working, but the quality of that time plummets. So you really need to get your health right and really focus on feeling your best.
Okay, so if you guys like this video, let us know. This was really scary to make because now I feel very accountable to you. And, um... What's your goal? Yeah. Give us your number it? one goal for the year. It doesn't have, it could be bigger than our goal. It could be smaller than our goal. It's personal. Whatever yours is, let us know in the comments. It'll be some sort of accountability too. We can all check up at the end of the year and see how we did. I'm sure we're all going to do it if we focus on it and we focus on why we want to do it and how we're going to get there, but be flexible with that path and strategize, strategize. Is it? And strategize. keep your eyes on the prize. Okay, love ya. Bye.